Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a simple notepad app in Unity and welcome to episode 3. So this tutorial we're going to take a look at some C-sharp coding and we're also going to apply some texture to our button right here. Don't forget, click the subscribe button, click the bell icon as well, stay up to date with every tutorial in this short series and with that in mind, let's get to work. So we're going to start by creating kind of like a texture for this button here rather than just have it plain and boring. So I'm going to right click down here, create a new folder and in here we're going to store any textures that we bring in. So we'll just call it textures. So in the folder I'm now going to drag and drop this yellow button texture right here and you can get this on the website, downloads and assets, notepad app and under tutorial number three. When you bring it in it may look like this it may not. You can tell it is actually a sprite by the little icon, the little play button thing next to it. If yours is set as default, like this, you would not have that there. That's actually known as just a normal texture, but we need it to be a sprite so we can apply it to this button right here. So if yours does look like this, you just need to click up here on texture type and change it to sprite and then click on apply. If already does come in as a sprite, then you don't need to worry about it at all. So next thing we need to do is click on the button over here and then just drag and drop that sprite image onto this source image over here in the image component. Drag and drop. Nice and simple. And there we go. It's now applied to our button. It is simple as that. So how do we get this button working? Well, we're going to use some C-sharp coding to actually get it doing exactly what we want it to do. So let's go over here to assets, right click, create a new folder because we're going to store all our scripts within this folder. So let's call it scripts. Now within this folder we need to right click create C sharp script and it is important we remember what we call this script just in case we need to make any changes to it later on. And let's have this known as button control. So any control via buttons within this entire app is going to be done in this script. So let's double click and open it up in Visual Studio. So if you've never ever ever coded before, or maybe just on a little bit of coding, maybe in a different language, and don't fully understand what all these lines mean and everything, please don't worry, we're going to go through this step by step and explain as much as possible. If you've done coding before, you probably know what's going on. So you'll be presented with this. So what are all these lines of code? Well, these first three lines of code are known as the namespace. And a namespace is a way of the script recognizing what data it has to pull from to actually make itself work. So because we're going to be using UI, remember, everything we're doing in here is classed as UI, we need to actually add in a UI namespace. And we can do that by going underneath using Unity Engine right there, hit return and then type using Unity Engine dot ui and a semicolon. So there's going to be a couple of things there if you're new to coding you don't fully understand why we've done it. Firstly is the capitalization. So the capital U and the capital E. It is case sensitive. We have to make sure that every piece of code is case sensitive because if we were to put a lowercase u right there it would underline and say no that's not right that's incorrect. It has to be an uppercase u capitalization. The next thing is this semicolon at the end. Why have we used a semicolon? Well, you'll notice all the lines above it also have a semicolon. Most lines of code will end with a semicolon, if not end or begin with a curly bracket. So speaking of which, we can see down here, we have this line of code, public class, button control, mono behavior with an open curly bracket. What is this? This is the class. This is where the script is stored. So everything we create, apart from the namespace, is going to be done inside the class. And if we click this end curly bracket, we can see that it highlights the beginning section of it. So all of that is enclosed. And you can also see the dotted line will account for the whole thing. So it brings up the corresponding open and close brackets. Easy. So what are these inside the class? Well, these green lines are known as annotations and they're a way of making notes in your script. These are lines which are not code and will not be executed when we run the script. These are just there for notes. Below it we have void start. This is known as a method. Same with void update. Anything that starts with something like void is known as a method and a method is something that we can call where all the script is stored. 
So for example, we have some lines of code in void start. That means, as it's dictated here, it will just do once whatever is in here when the script starts. And this method, void update, will be called once per frame. So it will be continuous. So a method can either be started once, it can be continuous, or it could be something that we call at any given time. And that's something that we're going to do in this script. So how do we get everything working? Well, what we want to do is be able to clear all of this text by clicking this button. So the objects that we're referring to, there's two of them. There is the button and there is the text. We need to, to declare the text as a variable. This script is going to be directly attached to the button, so we don't need to worry about that as an object. We only need to worry about the variable, which is going to be the text. So, how do we do this? Well, let's clear the methods it's given us and the notes, because we don't need them. So we can highlight those two methods and the notes and press delete, and we'll be left just with the public class. So, how do we declare variables? Well, it's fairly easy. Because we want to see it inside the inspector panel, I'll explain why later on. We'll need to type the word public, and then we declare the variable type. In this case, it's going to be a game object. And remember, capitalization is important. So we need to type game object. That's a capital G and a capital O. So we could have various different variables. You know, we could have uh, numbers, we can have uh, audio, we can have text we could have different things we have strings all kinds of different things but like i say in this case we need to reference it as a game object and now after we've declared the type we need to put the name of it we can call this anything we want but let's call it something reasonable that we would understand so let's just call it the text semicolon remember that semicolon ends the line so now we need to write our own method to clear whatever is in this game object, the text. And to do that, we actually need to have this method public. The reason we're going to have it public is because the button needs it to be that way so it can reference it. If we didn't have this method as public, the button would not work with it. So we need to type public void, and remember capitalization, and we can call this method anything we want. So because that we're going to keep it relevant, let's call it clear text. And then open close bracket and open curly bracket and hit return or enter, whichever. And then you'll be presented with the open close bracket for that method. So everything we type inside this method is something that we can then call when we press that button. But there's a little bit of uh, work to get that all in place. So let's concentrate on the line of code which will allow us to clear that text. So the text is the big thing. That's what we're aiming for. That's what we're using. So let's start with that. The text. And then dot. And then we need to reference a way of what we're doing. So if we click on this input field, which is the actual component we use, we need to reference the input field component. So how do we do that in script? Well, if we start typing get component, you can see it's highlighted exactly what we want right there. So it kind of predicts what it thinks you're going to do. So in this case, we do need get component. Then open spiky bracket and within inside this spiky bracket, we type the name of that component. In this case, it is input field. Like you see again, it's selected what it thinks we need to have. So then close spiky bracket and open close bracket. And next we need dot. So we have dot now because we need to reference something within that specific place. We need to reference this particular object within that component. And it's known as just text. So capitalization, as I said, is important. And although this is a capital T right here, we should not reference it with a capital T inside the script. That's just the way components work. So when we're referencing a component, the first bit in this case is capitalized. So it is the same, but any sub section of that component starts with a lowercase letter. It's just kind of defined between the two. So in this case, it is just text. So what do we need to do with this text? We need to make it equals nothing. So we can put 
equals and then two quotes and then a semicolon. So what has this done exactly? Well, if we were to put, for example, nine moons right there, when we press the button, it would change whatever is in this text to actually say nine moons. But we don't really want that, do we? We want it to be blank. So that's why we have two quote marks, because that will set it as blank. So now let's save that script. So hold control, press S or go file and save. And you'll notice it's safe because you'll have the green down the side to say, oh, good. When we go back to Unity, it will just compile. You'll notice this little icon down the bottom right, just compiling. If you have any errors, it will give you the error down here in your status bar and in the console as well. But since we don't have any errors, we're OK for now. It's only a couple of lines of code. So how do we get this script working how we want it to? Well, we have to actually attach it to the scene inside the hierarchy. So we can go to game object and click on create empty. And this will give us a completely empty game object with no components other than a transform component where we can attach anything we want. In this case, we can drag and drop the script we've written straight on. And you notice it appears over here as an actual component. Next, let's right click and rename this game object and we'll call this uh, app controls. So any script we write will be attached to this object and we can contain everything nice and neatly within in the app. It's simple. So we have that text component right there. Oh, sorry, the button control component with the text variable. So we need to attach whatever variable that needs to be. And remember, that's the input field. So it's this object here. We can drag and drop that over here. And you'll notice, perfect, it applies it so whenever this script runs, it will reference the text variable as being this object right here. So we're almost there, but how do we get that button to actually work the way we want it to? Well, if we click on the button itself, over here in the button component, we have on click. Currently, list is empty. We need to create a function for it. So if we click on plus, it will give us the ability to add a game object down here. And it needs to stay in runtime only because we need it to be, you know, runtime. Well, if you, you know, you should know what runtime is. It kind of uh, allows us to do it any time, really. So we just need to drag and drop our app controls down here onto this game object. And then this no function bar will highlight. And we just need to click on it, go down to our script name, which was button control. And it'll give you a whole load of options. But the one we're looking for is clear text because that's the method that we wrote. So what's happening here is this button will now run this method when we click it. So if we press play, go to our notepad and let's type some random text. When we press clear, it will disappear. Simple as that. So that is how we can actually use C-sharp coding to our advantage and do it again, clear. And we're going to be doing some more C-sharp coding because there's more to be done within this. Obviously, we're going to need to type stuff. We're going to need to save stuff. We're going to need to close the app and do all kinds of stuff. So there is more C-sharp coding to come. So next tutorial, we're going to focus a little bit more on layout. We'll probably add in a background as well, and there will be more C-sharp coding to come. So guys, until that next tutorial, thank you very much for watching.